Welcome to part five of the five-part Intellios Item Writer training webinar using the EPIC Remote Item Writing Portal. After completing this training webinar, within a week, you should receive your welcome email, which will contain a link and login information for the EPIC Remote Item Writing Portal. We recommend that you bookmark this site because it may not be the easiest to remember. Your username is your ARDMS and or APCA ID number, and you will use a temporary password to log in the first time. You may be prompted to change this temporary password to something more unique. Once you sign in, you will arrive at the My Item Writing Projects page. As a new writer, you should only see one project listed. ARDMS registrants may write for any specialty in which they hold an active ARDMS credential. But we recommend initially focusing on one specialty until you feel comfortable with the system and with the requirements of our item writing guidelines. Later on, you may wish to write for a different exam or for more than one specialty at a time. In this list of projects, you can see when the project started and the date it will end. You will also notice a column named Total Items Requested. This is not your personal goal. Remember, your goal is 10 items within a three-month quarter. This larger number refers to how many items we need from all the item writers of that project. To begin, simply find the project you want to work on and click the Create Item button. You will be taken to the item authoring screen. As you can see, there is a lot on this screen, so something you can do is click Collapse All, which consolidates everything, and that way you can address each portion as needed. The first thing I suggest you complete is the right side of the screen. To submit an item, the system currently requires you to select a level of difficulty. Use the drop-down and select a low, medium, or high difficulty level. Don't spend too much time on this, as we consider many factors when determining which items are selected for a form. Much more important is this next detail, the item content. This is where you will be asked to identify the specific task from the content outline that you want to write your item about. You can find the complete content outline for your exam in our resource library. Revisit part four of the webinar for instructions on how to get there. When you click on the content icon here, you will probably not see the full content outline. What you see are the tasks that we have the greatest need for at this time. If you can't find a particular topic listed here, it's because we already have a surplus of items written to that task and do not need any more. So scroll down until you find a task that interests you. Some outlines have multiple pages, and typically the tasks at the bottom of the outline get neglected, so check out the second page too. Once you find a task you want to write about, highlight it and click Select. You will see the selected task appear here. Before we move on, I just want to draw your attention to the other details on the right side of the screen. Again, you can see the start and end date for the project. You can email your mentor directly from the system, and you can email the Intellio staff member who is listed as the project manager for this item writing project. There is also a number to contact technical support if you encounter any issues with the website. But in most cases, after you select the content topic, you will be ready to begin writing your item. Click on STEM and a text box will open. Type your question, which will end with a question mark, and hit enter. If your stem is just going to contain text, you can move on. But at some point you may want to attach an image or video, and there are two ways to do that. First, I would recommend scrolling to the bottom where you'll find three buttons. Click Save to preserve the work you've done so far. Then place your cursor on the line below the stem where you want to insert the image. Click the image icon to upload a new exhibit. A pop-up will open, and just as you would attach a file to an email, you can browse your computer and find your image file. You will be asked to give the exhibit a name and to tag it based on the anatomy, image type, pathology, etc. These drop-down menus have been customized for each of our examinations, so only relevant classifications should appear. Select one or more terms to describe the image. Once the tagging is complete, Click Save Exhibit, and it will be placed beneath your stem. If you do not have access to images but think it would enhance your item to have one, you can view media from our media library by clicking this icon of the file box to insert an existing exhibit. 
the exhibit management screen will appear and you can either select the classifications for the type of media you're looking for, or if your search doesn't yield the results you're looking for, click Edit Search Criteria, clear your previous selections, leave all the parameters blank, and search again. You will be able to view all the unused images and video in our media library. Select a video and you can play it here. Continue scrolling until you find an image that might work for your item, then click Select Exhibit. When you're happy with your STEM, you can move on to the answer choices. Once again, you may wish to save to preserve your work before moving on to the next section. Enter your response choices one by one in each text box and identify the key by selecting the radio button just to the left of the correct answer. The next section, Rationales, is not required, but if you want, you can write a rationale for the STEM or any of the answer choices here. Keywords is a field we use internally, so you can ignore that section. However, we do require that you list a reference for each item. Just like with adding images, there are two ways to add a reference citation. Choose Add Reference to view a list of the most common books and journals for that specialty. Click on the headings to sort from A to Z, or Z to A, or scroll to find the textbook you want to reference. You will be prompted to enter a page number or range which you can enter in the blank field below the word Pages. Click Add Reference. You can edit or remove this at any time. If you cannot find the textbook or journal article you wish to reference within our list, you also have the option of adding a reference note. Simply type all the pertinent publication information into this blank field. Don't forget the page number, and then click Add Reference Note. Do this if you're citing a journal article that you might use to write one or two items. But if you're working with a different edition of a popular textbook that you think you'll use frequently, you can email your project manager using this link and request to have that text added to the list to save time in the future. The last section on the page is the comments section. This is where you will communicate with your mentor. You don't need to write anything initially, but when they respond with their feedback, this is where it will be. Finally, let's look at the four buttons at the bottom. If you are really paying attention, you may have noticed that the first time I took you to the bottom of the screen, there were only three buttons. We have already used the Save button, which saves the item in the system for further editing. The first time you click the Save button, the Preview function appears at the top and bottom of the page. When you preview the item, you can view the item in a format that is close to the way an exam taker would see it. It can be helpful to see the item in its entirety, and you can play your videos from here as well. Click Send to Mentor, and the item will be locked in the system for editing. We don't want two people working on the same item at the same time. Your mentor will get a notification email, and will hopefully review and comment on the item within the week, at which time they will send the item back to you. You can then incorporate the mentor comments. Feel free to go back and forth with your mentor as many times as necessary until you feel you've created an item that you would be proud to have on an ARDMS or APCA exam. Once you've reached that stage, you're ready to submit it to us. But be certain, because once you click Submit, the item status changes to Pending, and it cannot be returned for further editing. This concludes Part 5, the final section of the Intellios Item Writer Training Webinar. Thank you for taking the first step to becoming an item writer. We know your time is valuable, and we appreciate your dedication to our organization and to those who take our examinations.